I was thinking about how I started on this journey of serving God. One night when me and my best friend was getting ready for the club, putting on our makeup, but I said something along the lines of, I was saved. My best friend looked me in the face and told me, girl, you're not saved. Girl, I am saved. Can't even explain to you how offended I was. I grew up in a Baptist church. They told me all I had to do was confess the Lord as my savior, believe that I was saved and I was saved. But she grew up in a ministry that preached holiness. I mean, you know, if you say, then what are you saved from? I thought about that. And I remember talking to God. He gave me this analogy. If a son went into Walmart and they stole groceries, a video game, the consequences of their actions was for them to be put to death immediately. But the father jumped up and said, instead of killing my son and beg you to take my life, to give him another chance to do the right thing. Because of his love for his son and him saying, man, he's going to learn from his lessons. He's going to get this thing right. He's not going to steal no more. I'm going to lay down my life for him. And the next week, the son goes right back to stealing. What was the point of the father dying just for the son to continue in his way? It made so much sense to me. I always wonder who goes to hell if I go to heaven with all the things that I'm doing. I may feel like I do some things right sometimes. I am not living based off the way this Bible is. The Bible says you are serving to whom you yield your members to. So if you yielding yourself to sin and fleshly desires and a good time, how many of us are really living the word of God? So really praying that prayer, God, I want to hate what you hate. I want to love what you love. God has a real standard. God has real expectation. I'm here in Louisiana, you can't go to LSU with your backpack and say, oh, I go to LSU. I'm no, they have a requirement for you to come to their school. They can't just walk into a law firm right now and say I'm a lawyer because I confess with my mouth. You have to meet the requirement. You have to pass the bar in order to become a lawyer. I can't just walk into the hospital as a nurse practitioner and say, oh yeah, today I confess that I'm a surgeon and start performing surgery on people. The confession is not a confession with your mouth. In the old times, confession meant the way of life. It is a part of you. You give your energy to it. So if you confessing with your heart and your mouth, your lifestyle should back up that confession. I should know that you are a Christian. I should know that you love God based on the way that you carry yourself, the way that you live your life. You never could utter a word to me to tell me what you stand for. I should be able to look at your life and see what it is that you stand for. Everybody confesses Christianity, but nobody is really living the life. And I am not perfect in everything. Now God is still trying to work pride out of me. Right now God is still trying to work many things out of me. But purpose to die out to everything that is not the way of God. You think that you can lay on your deathbed after you didn't dance with the devil all your life and say, God, forgive me and think that that's going to qualify you. What was the purpose of the entire Bible instruction, a love letter to his children, telling them of his ways, showing them how they could be perfected, showing them how they could be made whole, showing them how they could be the light to the world. What was the point of the entire Bible? If all we had to do was confess with our mouth, it was no point. To have a Bible that instructs you, telling you all the ways of God that he wants to see practice in your life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Believe and confess through the life that he lived. You live that life also. Not just say it with words and don't have a life or faith to back up your obedience to God. That hospital has requirements. God has a requirement that we must become new creatures. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. People shouldn't be able to look at my Keisha today and see the old lifestyle that I live. Still turning up, still going crazy. You in these places, I'm not condemning you. You can be better. God can help you. You don't have to stay that way if you don't want to. I'm speaking to the people that's been looking for a way out. I'm speaking to people who have been seeking God on how to please him. But people shouldn't look at my life today and see that 10 years after saying that I was saved, I look and act just the same. What kind of God do you serve if he don't even have the power to change your life? I admonish you. Begin to seek God. What can you start to put off? 
You have a Lord that died for you. You wasn't stealing from Walmart, but you was fornicating, smoking, drinking, going crazy, doing all kinds of things. You don't have to live this life. You don't have to be this way. You can't be changed. God is not wanting you to go back to lying and fornicating and deceiving, doing all these things that are contrary to his way. Jesus died for you so that you can start to take on the life, the help of the Holy Ghost. You can become a new person.